Go ahead. Oh, I'm Senator Joe Hewn. What a um, long but emotional meeting tonight. We had roughly 30 people testify um, and told us about the atrocities that Judge Brennan has committed to them while they're in her courtroom. Just terrible. And again, we're taking all these comments and we're going to submit them to the uh, Judicial Tenure Commission and the Supreme Court Administrator's Office and of course consider them during our impeachment process in the legislature. Um, but the best thing the citizens could be served with today is if she just quit. Resign, give it up Judge Brennan, we're tired of this crap. testifying on my father's behalf. 
So back in their, uh, their the testimony, my father was trying to build a case, uh, my father's defense was trying to build a case for him to, de uh, to defend him and prove his innocence. And the biggest thing, the only thing that they had on my father was a false confession. That was it. There was nothing, no DNA, nothing, no, uh, no forensic evidence, no, um, you know, hair follicles, no fingerprints. There was nothing that tied my father to the scene. So the only thing they had on him was a false confession. So the two experts that uh, were in court to defend him, that was the, uh, the an expert from uh, California, his name is Dr. Leo Wint, uh, I believe, Dr. Leo, and a Dr. Wint. In fact, Dr. Wint is a psychologist. So she brought, uh, banned the psychologist, Dr. Wint, from testifying my father's state of mind, and she banned the Dr. Leo, who as an expert on false confession, and why people would confess crimes they didn't do, based on their uh, demeanor and how they view authorities, and easy to get into authorities. Because she banned them, sorry, sorry. Well, the main thing is, is that the only person that was allowed to testify for my father after it went, it was the um, was the psychologist. She banned, so banned the, uh, the expert on false confessions. So the psychologist came and they she, they were um, on stand defending my father, the only one that was able to testify. And as he was testifying and talking about my dad's state of mind, she said, you know, it's 4.30 and I'm interrupting this court case. I have a plane to catch and I warned you. And they had a big, uh, they had a big dealing about how to get this man back. It was uh, January 17th of 2013, and they wanted to bring him back. So the big, so the biggest thing, the biggest thing was having this man testify, and they were uh, scrambling for 15 minutes to try to get this man back. And he already had the game plan. And Judge Brennan says, "Oh well, that's too bad. I warned you at the beginning of the day, and if you're not done, you're done." And he couldn't testify for my father. And it turned out that she had to catch a plane with her girlfriends from depositions that she went to Washington, D.C. that, that um, night with supposedly her girlfriends. Now, I understand that she did have a, uh, she also had a, an affair with uh, Mike Congressman and Mike Bishop's uh, head staffer, Alan, uh, Alan Phillip, and he happened to be in Washington, D.C. Now, that's speculation of whether that she actually went to go see him. Um, however, it's still a fact that she interrupted the testimony of the psychologist of my father. The only one that was finally allowed, but she interrupted him anyway, so he was unable to clearly uh, educate the jury on my father's state of mind and why he confessed, and he, you know, being an innocent man. And so I think she was covering up for her lover, Sean Furlong, who was the lead detective on that case. Sean Furlong was in, uh, you know, in her ear, but Joe Bob, the prosecutor, Pam Lawson, was here for the majority of the trial whispering in her ear, they objected so many times. My dad's attorney said he's never seen so many objections uh, in court, let alone to the objections sustained or um, granted by the, by the judge. And there was no education, we couldn't educate the jury, and uh, she allowed that. And Dr. We also had Dr. Uh, Werner Spitz, one of the most renowned medical examiners in the world. And Dr. Werner Spitz came on stand, and Pam Moss tried to make him look like a senior old man. She kept looking at the jury, raising her hand, going, oh my gosh, can you believe this? Can you believe this? And, he, 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 and he, he, Dr. Spitz, Dr. Spitz said, I've never seen a prosecutor act like that. And he goes, and he goes, and he goes but the thing is, why did the judge let her con conduct herself like that? And we, you know, that's the question. And I'm sure everybody here today has got a story like that. So thank you for hearing me. I wish I could speak more on my issue, but uh, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for joining us. Questions? And I was accused of things I didn't do. The person who did do them recently was put in jail for five years. Many, many more people in Lansing. Michigan State Police. Judge Vernon was seen by a retired Michigan State Police officer a few days before my hearing at lunch at Brighton Bar in the corner booth. Sean a 40 year veteran of psychology from the Livingston County Court System with seven psychology degrees related to this related to the custody of my son. The individuals I just mentioned have multiple contacts with my ex wife and me before making a custody ruling. I'm now in the appellate court to have Judge Brennan's ruling overturned. During this time, my son has suffered verbal abuse and unreasonable living conditions. He no longer has the assortment of friends within a mile of the house that he grew up in. His grades are now straight A's because he has nothing better to do but study. 
like somebody who plays lacrosse during one season of the school year. His ability to socialize and play with his friends has been changed drastically. Judge Britton didn't even know the 12 best interest factors when she made her ruling. Judge Brennan required me to purchase my home because while I was still in arbitration when I did not have a job. I'm one of those lucky members of the auto industry. I had to take out my 401k money, which I worked my lifetime for retirement. That meant that I was taxed on the 401k money withdrawal at my age and further damaged my retirement. In Livingston County, there is a history of judges allowing extra time for someone to find a job in order to refinance their home. Hi. Pardon me? It's your time, but please. I'm, I'm about done. Uh, since you can't get financing when you're out of a job, Judge Brennan did not care for or consider the damages that she would inflict. Never in the history of SAE has Human Resources Department been such, uh, had seen such a high garnished wage as what I received. I'm going to jump ahead. Brennan, Brennan also threatened me with criminal contempt and was threatening to put me in jail, even though I was following orders and direction by the arbitrator to the best of my ability. Putting me in jail would not allow me to pay the alimony and child support, plus lose my U.S. State Department security clearances so I wouldn't be able to help our country in case I was called to serve. I'm going to jump ahead. I spent literally weeks trying to find a lawyer from outside of Livingston County in order to be able to take my case against Judge Brennan. I received apologies from the attorneys when asked for their help using terms of she's crazy, she's nuts. I'm sorry we're doing our, uh, I'm sorry we don't do business in Livingston County because of Judge Brennan. The Judge Brennan uh, treats everyone horribly. We can't represent you in Livingston County. There are many more things that I can say about how rudely I was treated from the moment that Judge Brennan entered the courtroom. I have heard it said many times Judge Brennan threatens everyone that badly. I do not believe that individuals should be treated poorly when they are in court. They should have, if they should be balanced, there should be a balance to justice. Judge Brennan, Brennan is the furthest thing from balance that I have seen in any judge and needs to be psychologically evaluated like I was. Absolutely. I am not a psychiatrist or a psychologist, but in the, the little I know about psychology, I would have to say that her actions are very much narcissistic in behavior, and she is an unbalanced individual. In my 58 years on this planet, I have never been treated so rudely. I will leave you with the last moment that I was in court with Judge Brennan, having stripped me of any of my income having taken my six years worth of alimony that was designed from the arbitrator and made it into perpetuity. I was pulled back into court because my ex-wife wanted my newly purchased puppy that I had purchased for my son and I to play with at home. I had already given the family pet to my ex in a writing for the divorce agreement. Yet the judge said, and I am paraphrasing because I believe she went off the record at the time of the hearing, this is what I remember. Your son will hate you forever because you did not give him his dog. I am not going to run custody over a dog. You will just have to suffer the consequences of your son hating you for the rest of your life. Finally, in my opinion, I believe Judge Teresa Brennan should be removed from her office. I believe the maximum fine should be assessed. I believe she should lose her license to practice law. She should not be allowed to hold any public position, including dog catcher. And if there was a way to imprison her for putting me under the duress in the courtroom by threatening me with being sentenced to jail, I would think that it would be appropriate to have her write letters of apology to everyone she has harmed during the time that she has been judged. <coughs> Judge Bridget Brennan has ruined my retirement and wasted my time. She has not read the case material and the input from the experts who established custody in the first place. She did not do her due diligence as the judge. Judge Brennan has hurt both my children, and by her actions, she, has, she needs to be held accountable. I would like to thank you on the committee for your service, and uh, would expect that you take appropriate action to disempower the judge permanently and immediately. Thank you. He came to my office, pulled out a gun, held me at gunpoint, threatened to blow my effing brains out, and 
I was laying there, he threw me on the ground. He, um, I thought sure I was going to die. And I was laying there thinking, my poor family is going to three funerals today, or this week, because my dad was up north dying. My grandson was about to walk into the office. That's who I thought it was when I heard the door. And I was going to die. I was able to tell him, oh, I'll give you the money. That was another thing. She never, she didn't understand the law. The opposing attorney even told me one day, good job on explaining to this judge what marital property is, because she didn't have a clue. And in Michigan, usually the spouse gets a Appreciate this. Again, these comments are going to be bundled up and uh, given over to the Judicial Venue Commission, the Supreme Court Administrator Office. And I'll tell you, we have caught their attention. Um, <laughs> I got involved, gosh, back in June, because I just got fed up. Threw my hands up and said, Judge Brennan, get the hell out of there, resign. And she's still there. Or at least collecting a paycheck with the title. And um, thankfully, my house colleagues are there with us. and. Um, we've, I feel the pressure is on, uh, the best thing that could happen today would be for her to just give it up. Yeah. But we don't see that happening. Um, the state police will continue their investigation. Uh, it's been a long time, I know. Uh, the Judicial Tenure Commission will continue their slow investigation. And then of course, once their recommendation is made to the Supreme Court, whatever that recommendation will be. Apparently that's a, uh, essentially a court proceeding as well. Uh, and if the Supreme Court uh, deems her guilty, then they will determine her penalties. Um, and of course the state police investigate and turn it over to the Attorney General. So all of these things are taking too dang long. We are keeping the pressure on. All of your comments aren't on deaf ears today. They will be turned over. Thank you. I appreciate it. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.